Hello friends, I am Muhammad, and in today's video we're going to be discussing versioning in our .NET 9 web APIs. We're going to be going through step by step of how we can actually add versioning to our .NET web APIs. We're going to be seeing how we can attach versions to different controllers. As well, we're going to be discussing a use case of versioning and how it will actually help us have different versions of our web API controllers running simultaneously. So let's get started. So what I have here is I have our Formula One Web API and it's a pretty simple Web API. Inside this Web API, I have two controllers. I have my drivers controller and I have my achievements controllers. And basically these controllers have the normal CRUD operation where you're able to add, update and delete. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna see it in Swagger. So here what I have is I have my Web API running inside Swagger. So all I'm gonna do right now is just check my get all drivers and as we can see here it basically goes into my application and inside my database and extract my driver information so here what i have done is i'm just added a new driver and if i go here to get all drivers right now click on try it out click on execute we'll see i have simple drivers added i have one driver here which is lewis hamilton i have two different random drivers that i just created so if i create if I select this ID right now here for my Lewis Hamilton driver, and if I go to get by driver by ID, if I update it here, we can see here I get my driver information back, which is exactly what I want from this types of behavior. And if I want to get the driver's achievement, all I need to do is just go here and basically get the driver achievement for that driver. So this is going to be the version one of my APIs, where actually I have a pretty straightforward two controllers where I can do my get and the set for all of the different information. So if we take a look here, this is my driver information where I'm basically getting any single driver information. And it's pretty straightforward. I have my driver ID, my full name, my driver number, and my date of birth. So what I want to do is I want to upgrade this endpoint by basically having the driver achievements available directly within this. So I want to change this current structure from this level of information to something like this, where on top of all of my driver information, driver ID, full name, driver number, and date of birth, what I want to do is I want to also get the achievement. So I'm able to add the number of world championship, the fastest laps of the pole position and the wins. All of them, I want them to be available inside the single request. So rather than me having to do two calls to my web API to get this information, I want to try to combine them into one. And we can say that I can, I can update this one. But basically what I want to do is I want to have a way where I can actually have backward compatibility. So what do I mean by that? I want to have the capabilities of anyone who wants to use the new API to use it. If anyone who's actually using the current version of the API to use it as well. I don't want to introduce any type of breaking changes that might affect the application that they are using. So I want to have the two versions running simultaneously. And this is where API versioning will come into place. This will allow me to have two versions of my API running at the same time. And I can assign different versions where I can actually allow me to have these two response type available for me so let's see how we can do that so going back to my rider all i'm going to do right now is i'm going to stop my application and i'm going to go to my terminal and inside my terminal i'm going to install two packages so the first one is going to be dot not add package and this is going to be asp dot versioning dot mvc and this is the first package that i want to install and now we can see it has installed successfully i'm going to install a different package which is going to be the asp.versioning.mvc.api explorer. So once I install this, now I have my two packages installed. If I want to check them, if they are installed successfully, I can just go check my CS proj. And we can see here that I have both of them installed and available inside my web API. Perfect. So now that I have done this, the next step is I need to go to my program.cs. And what I'm going to do here inside my program.cs is I want to update it to inform my application that I'm going to be implementing API versioning. So it will prepare all of the right routing tools that it's going to be needing. As well, I'm going to specify some of the configuration that's going to be needed there in order for me to actually utilize these two API versions that I want. So before I have my builder.build, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the following. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to put builder services, add API versioning, and I'm going to specify my options. And the first option that I want to specify is going to be the default version. And I'm going to say it's going to be the default version of 1.0 or basically version one. I can fix the reference for this. And I'm just going to remove the minor version. I'm just going to keep one single version, one primary version. Perfect. So now that I have specified the default version of my API, which is going to be the one who anyone who's using my current application will default to if they did not specify any types of version. The second one is going to be the assume 
default version if unspecified. And it's basically what I'm saying here, if someone made the request to my API without specifying which version of my API they want, it will by default go to the API version one. In case they have specified something else, it will go to the API version two. And this is gonna be the key here. So once I specified that, the next is I wanna specify the report of the API version. So this means whenever I'm doing an API call and I get back a response inside the header of that response, I'm able to see all of the different API versions which is available for that endpoint. So if someone is exploring it and they can see that they are in version one and they can see there's a version two available, they will be able to export through that if they did not check the documentation. The next configuration is gonna be how I'm gonna be able to specify the API version. And what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna use it through the header. So I'm just saying here that the API version is gonna be embedded in the header and through the header i'm going to be specifying what version of my api api i'm going to be using and this makes it very clean and simple so anyone who has currently the url embedded in their code they will not need to do any types of changes the same url will work all they need to do is update the header configuration in order for them to choose what type of api version they want so now that i have specified the default implementation for my api versioning and because I'm gonna be using Swagger, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be adding additional information to my API Explorer so the API versioning will work with Swagger. So first I'm gonna here uh, put is add MVC and then what I'm gonna put is add API Explorer. Again, I'm gonna specify the options again for it. And inside the options for API Explorer, the first one that I'm gonna specify is the group name format and this is going to be basically specifying if i have different versions with a primary and a, a prime version and a minor version of my api i will be able to specify it in this format second i'm going to specify the substitute api version in the url so in case it isn't the url i'm going to be substitute that with it i'm going to specify the default version again so swagger will know which version to use as well as assume default in case nothing has specified and basically this is all i need to do inside my program.cs so now when my application runs it will be automatically able to identify that there is api versioning enabled it will configure all of the pipelines to have all of the routing for versions in place and will basically will be able to pick up any types of controller changes that I want. Perfect. So now that I have this, the next item that I want to do is if we go here to my driver's controller, we can see when I get my driver information, it's going to return to me the get driver response. And this, if we go to the implementation, the declaration, we can see it's a very simple class. which specify the driver ID, full name, driver number, and date of birth, which is going to be the same one as here. And what I want to do is I want to update this to contain the achievements as well. And in order for me to do that, what I need to do is I'm going to be creating a new response and I'm going to call this get I'm going to full driver response, full driver info, for example. And now what I'm going to do is, again, this is only for demo purposes. There's a, way, a lot of way where I can streamline this, but I'm just going to copy some of the values from here. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a new class. So I'm going to put public class. I'm going to call it get achievements. And the achievements basically is going to return the information from the achievements. So it's going to be the world championship, race wins, pole positions, etc. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify it like this. So I'm going to put public and here is going to be get achievements and I'm going to call this achievements. And that's it. So now what I'm going to do is I created a new response type and this response type is going to contain all of the information that I want in order for me to return the new format. I can even change the current parameters if I want, but I'm just going to keep them the same for the sake of simplicity. So now that I have this, now let's look at what I have here. So inside my controllers, I have my driver's controller. So how can I add API versioning into this? One way of doing it is to actually add different API versions to my controller. So I can put here API version and I can specify this could be version one and I can specify version two and then assign the same API version and assign specific version to an action. That might work, but I would say it will make my controller convoluted if I have a lot of different changes. So the way that I like to do it is by specifying the initial controller that currently exists as API version one is inside my controllers folder, I create a new directory and I call this V2. And what I do is I copy the current controller. I add it inside my V2. First of all, I update my namespace to .v2 so I don't have a conflict. 
and I will update my API version here to two. So what I'm doing by this one here is by having two separately, completely separate files. One is going to be completely dedicated for version one. The other one is going to be completely dedicated for version two. And this way I have separation of concerns. So no matter what changes that I do within version two, I know 100% it will not affect anything within version one. And this will allow me to have a bit more flexibility in, in the way that I can actually structure my code inside my controller. So once I have added this, I'm going to delete all of the other actions that I do not need right now. And I'm just going to keep the get driver by ID, which is going to be the one I'm going to be updating. So inside my action here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put var achievements and it's going to be equal away to underscore unit of work dot achievements dot get driver achievement async. And I'm going to specify the driver ID. And now what I want to do here is I want to actually update my response back. So instead of using the get driver response, which is the old one, I'm going to put get driver full driver info response and now this will allow me to get the new mapping so next what i want to do is i want to specify my achievements and what i can do i can put result dot achievements equal underscore mapper map get achievements and basically what i'm doing here is i'm mapping the other achievement inside my achievement result perfect so now this will not work because i did not add the new profiles for the new mapping capabilities so all i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the mapping profiles domain to response and i'm going to add the two new implementation i'm just going to copy paste these so first of all for the achievements it's going to be the get achievements and for the drivers also i'm going to copy paste the same thing and instead of get driver response i'm going to call it get full driver information response and that should be it so now if I run my application and I go to my web browser and I'm going to click on refresh. So first of all, we can see that everything is still the same here. If I go to my API drivers, we can see here that if I want to get all drivers, it's going to ask me to specify my API version. And if I don't click on anything, I click on execute, I still get the same thing because I only have one version of it. Even if I try to specify version one here, it will give me the same thing. If I put version two, this will not work because I don't have a version two of this. So it will basically tell me bad request. It does not exist. So if I put version one, we can see it actually works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the driver ID that I have here and I'm going to go to get driver by ID and I'm going to click on try it out and I'm going to put my driver ID here. So first of all, I'm going to try this without specifying any types of API version. So we're going to click on execute. And here we can see I'm getting the same old driver response type that we had originally. I'm going to put version one, click on execute. Same, we can see it's the exact same thing, getting the exact same response. Now I'm going to click on version two. I click on execute. We can see I get the new format available for me directly out of the box. And I didn't really have to change anything except specifying the different version. And this is how easy it is in order for me to utilize versioning inside my .NET 9 web APIs. So this has been a very quick introduction about API versioning inside .NET 9 web APIs. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe. If you'd like to support me, please become a member of this channel or try to support me on Patreon. If you'd like access to the source code, it's available to my Patreons and to my channel subscribers. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.